It's the video series about hope, love, and faith in Jesus Christ. God works in mysterious ways. He brings miracles. Hey, do you know what God I serve? Do you know who created me? Little did I know that God was going to use our outreach, our little outreach we had on the Oxford on Market Street to lead to your conversion. To hear the gospel, it really was a seed planting to my heart. God has got you. Faith feature on the Mars Hill Network, where you'll always find hope in the journey. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Faith Feature here on the Mars Hill Network. Most of the interviews we do are usually in the One North studio. And as you can tell, we're not in the One North studio right now. As a matter of fact, we're here in Syracuse, New York at Adult and Teen Challenge on Fermi Street. And you may be wondering why we're here. You kind of hear a lot of commotion going on in the background. We're actually here live during the pancake breakfast that they host annually. And the pancake breakfast, they have wonderful pancake sausage. I had a plate earlier and I'm pretty full. And you know, I really encourage everybody to come down. But the reason for this interview today is I wanted to bring two gentlemen on who are very involved with the ministry here at the Syracuse Adult and Teen Challenge. So my guests today are Rashad Hammond. He is the program director here at Syracuse Adult and Teen Challenge. And then also Carlos Ortiz, who's the program supervisor here at Syracuse Adult and Teen Challenge. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having us and thank you for coming. We're really excited to have you here. Yeah, no, very welcome. Thank you for having us, we appreciate it. And so it's from my understanding, just talking to you guys a little bit before, uh, coming on the interview today that you guys actually went through the program. Yeah, right? we did, yes. Yeah, yes. so do you guys want to, before we get into a little bit of what we're doing here today with the Pancake Breakfast, do you want to share how you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and how the Lord really used this program to help you get there? So we're going to start with you, Rashad. Yeah, so thank you again for having us here. We're really excited and uh, it's always a wonderful opportunity to get to share my testimony a little bit. Um, so I get the opportunity to serve here at Syracuse <laughs> Open Challenge as the program director, but um, I actually did go through the ministry myself. I had a, a five-year struggle with heroin addiction. And um, it really brought me to an end of myself. Um, when I, and I'm not gonna go into grave detail, but I literally ruined every aspect of my life. Um, from my family relationships to um, homelessness, um, to um, financial ruin, I, in every way, shape, and form, um, I hit a rock bottom. And uh, when I needed help, um, through my mother, who found out through the church of a place called Teen Challenge, um, I was open and ready to make a change in my life. So I, call, I actually didn't even call Teen Challenge. I literally was in such despair that I just showed up at the doorsteps of Teen Challenge one day with just the clothes on my back. And um, my life has never been the same since that day. Um, they took me in. Um, embraced me from day one. I felt a love that I've never felt before. And that really began my process of getting introduced to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, through this ministry, through me coming into Teen Challenge, I was able to begin a relationship with him. And um, I found out through that process that uh, even though I came into Teen Challenge, because I really just wanted to get sober, that was my only intention, really. Um, I found out a byproduct of a, a relationship with Jesus Christ is that I get sober, but it's so much greater than that. Right. And, um, and that's what Teen Challenge really is about. Teen Challenge, um, it's not so much uh, of a rehab. We're a discipleship program. We're here to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And then through that, you know, yes, you'll get sober. Uh, but we want, you know, um, men, women who come to our door to experience the freedom that is found through Jesus, uh, the bondage of addiction to be broken. And um, Teen Challenge is a year-long program. It was, it was a, a long process for me. Um, some people get radically touched by God and they're delivered right away. But for the most of us, it's, it's a process. And um, I'm so grateful for Teen Challenge because they opened the doors to me. Um, it didn't cost me a cent to come into this program. And through Teen Challenge, I began to develop that relationship with Jesus Christ. And um, I can say today that, you know, um, the more I, and closer I grew to him, the more intimate my relationship was from him, um, that bondage just broke away. And um, that was almost 10 years ago to this day. And I can say um, today I am so incredibly blessed. Um, I met my wife through the program, the ministry of Teen Challenge. We've been married four years now. Um, we have a wonderful son, Jackson. 20 months old. I got another one on the way in two weeks. Wow. And, um, you know, God has done uh, immeasurably more than I can ever ask or imagine. And honestly, um, it's through the power of the gospel and of Jesus Christ, but um, the vessel God used was Teen Challenge Ministry. 
And uh, I consider it an honor now to get to serve in this ministry and help other men um, that were where I was 10 years ago. And I get to help walk them through the same process and, and basically um, just presenting the gospel to them and watching the Lord do the same work he did in me to them. And there's no greater honor that I could ever have thought in my life that I could be doing. So yeah, that's I'm forever amazing. grateful. Yeah, you must be so happy seeing these people come into the program, going through the same transformation you went through yourself. That's yes. got to be awesome. And just seeing the fruitfulness of the program. Absolutely. So, so thank you for sharing that. And Carlos, how about you, my man? So how did you come to know Lord Jesus and how did he use the Dalton Teen Challenge in that process? Yes, yes. It's been quite the journey for, for me as well. Um, I found out about the ministry uh, through my aunt who served at a local church and she kept telling me about the gospel and for years and for years I would reject it. I didn't want to hear anything about it. Uh, I grew up in the inner city of New York in the Bronx in a really rough area and I kind of fell into, you know, uh, the statistics, right? And so at an early age from um, for juvenile, you know, group homes and by the age of 18 already in prison, uh, serving some time and trying to come home from that and trying to change my life around but still kind of falling into that product of, of my environment, really. And uh, I got into a really bad car accident where it flipped five times on the Jersey Turnpike. And it really put me into like the deepest depression, you know, that I ever felt in. And I couldn't really shake this heaviness that I had on me. And so for a while I was just with that question, I think that a lot of us, you know, want to ask is, you know, what's my purpose? You know, what's the meaning of life? Trying to figure this out. And I uh, reached out to my aunt one day, just kind of at the end of myself, you know, really giving up on, on life because I was so depressed, you know, I ended up homeless on the street. Um, even though I knew I had loved ones and families and opportunities that I could have, I could have reached out to some people for some help, but I, I really felt like I deserved the worst, you know, at that time in my life. And um, I reached out to my aunt. She put me in contact with her pastor and they told me about uh, Teen Challenge and I was just willing to just try anything just to escape that heaviness of depression, you know, that I was feeling. And uh, Teen Challenge is the vessel that God used to, to draw me unto himself. Uh, but just like Pastor Rashad, though, it was, it was a, a process for me as well. It was maybe like six months into the program where it just wasn't connecting for me. It just wasn't happening. Uh, but here in the ministry, we have a, a structure where we get up in the morning, 6 a.m., and uh, we get ready for the day. And at 6.30, the first thing we do is we get right into the Word, you know. And so it was through that daily devotion of just reading God's Word and just slowly kind of chipping away at this heart of just stone, just just this hardness that I had, you know, in my heart. And God really started to soften me up. It was probably in Teen Challenge the first time that I really cried, you know, and, and started to feel. And, um, and the Lord just started to just draw me into himself. And I started learning about relationship uh, with Christ, you know, here in the ministry. And it wasn't, wasn't long before that heaviness was lifted. And he replaced that with his joy. And I would wake up with peace. And uh, that bondage, just being set free from that bondage, which is a beautiful thing. And just the camaraderie of the, uh, the brotherhood that we have here, you know, in the program, the, the fellowship, the, uh, the godly community that he placed around me. Not only for the brothers that I was going through the program with, uh, but also my leaders. And um, we've all become just a big family, you know, here. I was really just embraced by everyone here when I first came in and I felt a part, you know, of something for the first time. And yeah. it's kind of crazy because, you know, my whole life uh, growing up in that struggle, just never thinking that I was ever good enough right. or ever would become anything, you know, good or be proudful for my parents, you know, to be proud of me for anything that I accomplished. And and God has really done, as you said before, just exceedingly and abundantly more than I can ever imagine. And so I was taking online uh, classes, you know, pastoral classes. Uh, I found my wife on a mission trip. We just got married two years ago. And um, it's just a blessing and opportunity to serve here in the ministry and just share that peace and, the, and just share the hope in the gospel that set me free. Just knowing that if he could do it for me, I know that he can he can touch anyone because really I was just completely turned off from it, you know, and 
and God has just done such a work, and it's been a blessing to be able to serve here. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing both of you. Really appreciate it. There's, you know, just hearing from your story, like when we're in those places where we're down and out in our sin, there's there's a lot of feeling of condemnation that the mm -hmm. enemy puts there. Right? We know from Romans 8, 1, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So I'm really glad that, you know, the Lord really spoke to you at some point in your guys' lives. And I was just thinking about it as you were talking. I, there's three, I, I guess you could classify in three S words, right? There's surrender, mm. realizing your need to make a change, the submission, submitting yourself to that change, and then sanctification, which is the Lord making the change in you. And then like you said, going through the program wasn't like all sunshine and roses at first. It took a little bit, but that sanctification process really got you to a place where the Lord eventually like got you sober, right? And it, it just became second, like not even a thought that crossed your mind because the Lord, His Spirit's in you, His nature's in you now. And so it's really nice to also see how, you know, later on in Romans it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed right. by the renewing of your mind so you may know what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. And it sounds like here, as you said, you start in the Word every single morning at 6.30. That's a great way to do that and a great way to be disciple of the Lord. So that's wonderful. So thank you so much for sharing that. Now, as you can, I've already mentioned it, but as you can see and hear, we, the pancake breakfast is going on right now. And part of the reason for that is it's a, it's a fundraiser, really, right, for what you guys are doing. So do you want to share with those that are watching what's currently going on in the program right now? I know there's like a, a project for the, like the women's ministry mm -hmm. coming here. Do you guys want to share a little bit about what's going on there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now here, specifically at, at Syracuse and Open Game Challenge, uh, we have a lot of different things going on. Um, you touched on um, our women's home that we have. It's located out in East Syracuse. We have purchased the home and we're really excited about the opportunity to have a place for women in the area to come to to receive the same healing that we receive. Right. So we're in the process of starting the renovation to get ready for four women's homes. So that's kind of where we're at. And an event like this goes a long way in helping us to complete that mission and goal. Right. Um, so that that's happening right now. We're really excited. Um, I know the, the community, uh, especially the church community around us, has really um, come alongside us in making this happen. And um, we can see the finish line. We can see it there. And uh, we're just uh, continuing to press on to um, get that home ready and get women. Um, in those beds and then ultimately just to give them the gospel right and um also, on the men's side of the program here in Syracuse, we're really excited about something that we just launched, and that's what we're calling our re-entry um, phase of our program, and that's post-teen challenge. So, um, for our graduates that come through the ministry, um, do that year-long process, um, you know, develop a relationship with the Lord, began that sanctifying process that you were talking about, um, we're trying to set them up for success beyond teen challenge, right? So, what happens after I did my year and, you know, I have this newfound relationship? relationship in the Lord. So we are offering them um, opportunities to live in a, in a house next door. Um, we set them up with employment um, options because a lot of the guys um, either don't have a job, haven't necessarily learned a skill or a trade, and don't know what to do with their life. You know, um, you know they want to live for the Lord, but they don't know what's next. So um, we set up um, a great accountability place to live where they stay plugged in with our program. Um, we set them up with a job. We begin to work on some of the issues in their life that maybe that they dug a hole in themselves for, whether it's uh, financial issues, um, debt, you know, they lost their driver's license, they have... Uh, criminal court issues, things like that. We work with them through that and get them to a place uh, to begin to save money, do some financial training, and get them to the, um, be able to move eventually back into society prepared for the world. Um, sometimes it's a lot all at once, so we use that time and um, for our reentry program to prepare them and get them to be not only contributing members of society, but also to bring them back out into society as men of God now. Uh, getting them plugged into the local church, and, uh, and we're really excited about that. That's something that's new and different, so we're, we're helping those that are in the midst of, of the struggle of addiction, they come to Teen Challenge, but we're also helping those to succeed beyond the, the doors of Teen Challenge as well. And like yeah. Amen. That's really great to hear because, I mean, you guys do great work in the program helping mentor and disciple the guys. Uh, but then after the program, there's kind of like a what if, or like right. what's next. Yes, you know? exactly.
And, you know, it sounds like this program's now bridging that gap. Absolutely. Right? And, that, and that could be very helpful because I'm not saying it's with every guy that comes in this program, but there might be a feeling sometimes like, okay, I go through the program, I'm done. Okay, what's next? They don't really know what to do and they and they may gravitate towards that old life. Yeah. You know, it's not everybody, but I've heard some cases. Sure. So it's really nice that you guys are now filling that gap. And it's like, hey, we, we brought you through this program, but now we're here to help you that next step. So then you can do it on your own. So that's really nice. And I'm really glad that people who are supporting Team Challenge, they're supporting this. They're they supporting are. this next step of the program. So, and I've actually been to the women's home that you had discussed and it's, it's beautiful. I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, I know the project that's been a little bit delayed, but it's also because they're doing more things. I think it's going to be the home, the women's home for the state. Is, is that correct? Yes. Uh, okay. It looks like we're moving in that direction. Again, there's a, a lot of moving parts beyond just the, the physical renovation of the house. Right. That we're still making sure that we're working out, and that's because when we launch it, we want it to be as successful as possible. Absolutely. So uh, we want to make sure we're doing it the right way, uh, in God's time. And you know he's definitely there's a lot of developments behind the scenes that are happening. So we're we're in prayer, we're waiting on him and getting his lead and direction. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it does look like it, it's moving in that direction, and um, you know that's part of the reason why we're really excited about it because uh, Syracuse's uh, and Team Challenge at least has never had a women's home here. So right. I mean we're really excited for that to to come to pass. Yeah, we're really excited for it too, and definitely keep it in uh, your prayers for yes. Team Challenge yes. because as they said, they want to do the very best with this home to help the women out just as they're helping the men. So before we go, gentlemen, I'm going to uh, ask you this, Carlos, and then I'll bounce it to you, Rashad. Um, for somebody who may be watching, who may have been in the place that you guys were once in, feeling hopeless and kind of stuck in addiction, what is a piece of advice based on your own experience that you would give them to help them see that there is hope? for your future, especially through Christ. So Carlos, I'll start with you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is a, a joy and peace that, that we have, you know, as believers. And so if you're going through something, if you're struggling, I just want to let you know that the enemy wants to keep you isolated. Mm -hmm. He wants you to feel like you're stuck there, that you can't connect, that you can never have anything more than what you have uh, right now in this moment. So if you're struggling, please just reach out. I mean, this event really is about connecting you know, with the community. Our pancake breakfast that we host here every year is completely free uh, for the community to stop in and just uh, just build relationships, you know, an opportunity for us to just share, you know, what we're doing here. And it's just about that, taking that first step. Just be uh, brave enough and bold enough to just take that first step and just try something different, right? That's the only way that we can get some different kind of results is, nice. is just trying to, try, trying to do something different. So I would yes. say just give it a chance, you know, just reach out to someone either here in the ministry or in your local church and just hear about the goodness of the Lord. The word says that, uh, that once you taste and see how good the Lord is, better is one day in his house. Yes. You know, and so it was a struggle out there uh, for me. Uh, and I know the peace and the joy that I, that I have in Christ now. And we want to be able to share that here uh, with everyone that we come in contact with. Mm. So please just uh, pick up a phone, just come out, and just connect with people. I would say just taking that, uh, that initial first step would be the biggest thing. Mm. Yeah. Amen. And anything you want to add to that, Rashad? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times I do uh, bring myself back and reflect when I was at that really low point in my life. And when I was in that bondage of addiction, that bondage of sin, and I couldn't help myself but to, to live that life. And... Um, I remember the hopelessness that I, I had. Mm. I remember the lack of joy. I remember the thoughts in my mind where I didn't even believe in God at that point yet, but I remember thinking in my head, like, all I really want in life, I just want to be happy. And I didn't know what that meant. Mm. Um, and as I've come to find out, you know, I was sincerely looking for joy. And that joy, that peace, um, that hope, it's, it's found in God. It's found through uh, a relationship with Him. And um, I want to encourage you that it's possible. I used to think that there was no way I could go a day without literally, you know, sh shooting up drugs, without having that that uh, in my life. And I didn't know how it was possible. And I remember looking at people out in the world and society and think, how did they function, you know, without this? Because I couldn't. Um, but there is freedom from that. That's not how your life has to be. 
Um, so I want to encourage you, you know, even if you're skeptical about what is this whole God thing or how can Jesus really, um, you know, come into my heart, penetrate my heart and, and make me into this new creation. Um, you know, if you knock, he will answer. Yes. And I want to encourage you with that. Just, you know, give it a chance. God will meet you wherever you're at. You just be open to him. Be open to what it is that he has for you. And that joy, that hope, that peace is beyond anything I could have ever imagined. It really, really is. And that doesn't mean life is always easy. But the life that I have today, the life that I live today, the life I live for the Lord, it's it's so blessed. And it's everything that I ever wanted. Um, but I had to just give it a chance. So I, um, I asked you you, that if you're struggling, you know, um, you can call us up. We're here to help. Um, and if it's just, if you're not ready to make a commitment, at least it's just to talk to you and to see, you know, how we can pray for you. We are here. We want to offer that help to you. Um, and Teen Challenge is a great option if it's something that you think or a loved one that you have might benefit from. We are here to help. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And just last thing I would share is, you know, it seems like in both of your guys' testimonies, the Lord kind of got you out of your comfort zone to make that change, you know. And for those who have listened to this show and watched it, you know, I've shared a couple times about my testimony. I got saved in Oxford, England, of all places. And really, that was so far out of my comfort zone. So the Lord had to do that to get my attention. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that's the thing. I was seeking the same thing. And what is it also saying, uh, Jeremiah, I believe? Um, if you seek the Lord, you will find That's him. right. So I encourage you to do that as well today. And for those of you who know of Syracuse Dalton Team Challenge and are here locally, obviously this interview is coming out after the breakfast. <laughs> we'll stop on by. Yeah. They're doing the breakfast annually. So next year, if you're here, please come. But also support the Dalton Team Challenge. You can write a check and send it to them at any time and really help support what this ministry is doing. We're doing great work for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So again, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate yes, you. Yes, thank guys. you for having us and thank you for coming. Yeah, thank Absolutely. you very much. Um, well, with that, thank you so much for watching this episode of Faith Feature. Until next time, I'm Teddy Caputo with the Mars Hill Network, where you'll always find Open the Journey. <laughs>